quiet confidence about himself. Uh, he's operating the offense at a high level. He understands uh, from what Coach, uh, Coach Austin is trying to teach him. He's been able to execute that on the field. Uh, just totally confident. He's hitting that ease and everything. But being able to check protection, uh, get us into the right runs. I mean, it's just a different sense of uh, urgency about himself right now. You mentioned Jerk Williams' role as potentially the pass catcher. What do you kind of see out of DeMarty, what he can do this season? He was injured last year, but he showed a lot of explosiveness. A lot of the same things. Um, the DA, I think, is uh, an excellent uh, runner between the tackle, also on the outside edge. He's showing really good hands. I mean, I think both of those guys are kind of yin and yang. I think they both uh, bring a lot of similar skill sets uh, to the table. Has Keandre kind of lived up to what you thought would be a great player? He has, even more. Uh, he's done a great job besides his athletic ability and being a great receiver, but being more of a veteran guy, a leader in that room uh, with all those young wideouts of how to do things the right way. Uh, I thought his summer was excellent. Uh, getting ready and you can just tell that he's done his career. These freshman wide receivers being freshmen. I mean, you joke with Cam this spring. He's like, I'm still learning how to go grocery shopping. Now, what have you seen from them, like, in those kind of quirky moments? It's just funny and refreshing. The guys, are, they're always happy. They're always around the building. If they're not doing football, then they might be playing video games. Uh, they go bowling. I mean, just the simple things in life. They don't, they walk off a duck back. It's like they don't worry about anything. They just do what they need to do, and they're having a lot of fun, and it's kind of refreshing to see that. It's uh, really everything I've dreamed of, uh, having a place with all the tradition, all the resources. Uh, there's a lot to sell here for players in the past, coaches in the past, what we're doing right now, facilities. Uh, I think it's really put us in the game with, uh, with, uh, with a lot of recruits. Do you feel like, uh, uh, do you just feel like it's going well right now and you can see this club is going to its way to being a championship? I do. I think uh, everybody in this town understands the expectations of, of what's required to recruit. And uh, we're doing a great job of getting the right guys uh, in front of our head coach and here on our campus. Obviously, we got to sign them all and let them all, but right now, I think it's going the right direction. It always has. I think uh, being a fundamentally efficient scoring machine, it requires us to make explosive plays. Uh, it, but it, it becomes a standard, an expectation. And uh, we just try to challenge our guys. Hey, expect it. If our offensive line can protect, you know, quarterback make the right read, it's the right coverage, you should make the play. Okay, and it should be an explosive, and we should be able to do that, you know, get a count on that week in and week out. Uh, so that is something we talk about, it's something that's expected, and it's needed for this offense to throw. I did. It was, uh, obviously growing up being a fan of Auburn when I was a younger kid, getting a chance to uh, be here and walk these halls, be on the practice field. I had to pick myself and remind myself that I'm here. And uh, got a lot more to do, a lot more goals set. But being here, being a part of this uh, with Coach Freeze has been a awesome. There's been a few. We asked Austin Keys the other day to describe the defense, and he used some words he said violence. How would you describe the offense uh, on the flip side? Um, I would say explosive. I think the other word, the key word is, I think uh, being consistent. I think we've been more consistent than we were this past break. The one more that I want to Throw one of them across the field. Yeah. Um, as far as the headset working with the uh, communication with the quarterback, oh, uh, it's been good. It's been uh, been great. We've been able to do that with Peyton. So, uh, really, no hiccups as of yet. That was the RPO, not installed. That's the point. We're not all the way fine tuned with it. Um, I think we're making the right call necessary. You know, our progression right now. Um, I think from where we were this spring, I think uh, we're much better. And I think our guys, starting with our quarterback, have a great understanding of what we're trying to do. Thanks, guys.
What's up, man? Uh, a couple of in the spring game, he did a great job of catching a go route. Um, he adjusted to the ball a week ago off of a fade and caught the ball over the defender. You know, something that you really can't coach. He's a guy that can basically still be open even when he's covered. Uh, so, but doing that consistently is what the challenge has been, and he's been showing up and doing that so far. Getting a guy like Keandre in the offseason, what was your, your pitch, Marcus? How did you sort of use a guy like Keandre as a guy transfer with that kind of words conversation? Yeah, coming in and being a vet, you know, treating himself like he's an NFL free agent. They had the chance of going in with a veteran quarterback, uh, being in a position where he was going in to lead as well. And, had a great opportunity to go contribute and you know make a lot of plays. How would you describe the guys? Example, example. Uh, so many experiences for him playing in real games and uh, making adjustments. He doesn't get routes real easy. Uh, that's what I would probably say he's brought to the table. Just a little bit of a pride, confidence, and he goes out and just produces every single time. Uh, Peyton has really had a great camp so far. He has a, a real complete and holistic um, grasp of what we're trying to do offensively. And it doesn't mean he has made mistakes. Uh, yeah, they all make mistakes, but uh, he, he is a really, really smart quarterback. Uh, he knows every blocking scheme, the run game, protections, he knows it all. He knows the weaknesses of defenses. He knows what we can put in something new, a concept, you know, a brand new concept, and and he'll immediately know why that's going on because he, because he'll immediately know from his past, his experience, and his training, and his study of defenses that it's designed to defeat this, whatever you know, this is, and uh, it gives him a huge advantage um, because now uh, he can anticipate the game. He can anticipate his decisions um, with understanding pre-snap and just very quickly post-snap where he's going with the football and, and how to get himself protected to be able to get the ball off uh, properly. So uh, doing a really, really good, really, really good job. He's throwing the ball accurately. He's protecting the football. He's pulled the ball down and uh, he looks a little faster this year than, than he did last year and I think he's in better shape. He's a little stronger. It's time to sit in the zone. He kind of do that more naturally than a, a guy that haven't been in that quarterback room. Uh, it's awesome to have him in there because uh, sometimes he speak up and say say some things, and so it, it's, it's just a good uh, combination of guys from top to bottom as far as personality wise and what they bring to the room. Uh, it, it's been good so far. How's your position group doing so far from a health standpoint? Are you guys relatively healthy? Oh yeah, we, the first yeah, we relatively healthy. Uh, and that, thank God, you know, we, we're going to continue to work. And that's why we harping on making sure we get uh, treatment, making sure we stay hydrated and doing a little things so we could be proactive from that standpoint. But uh, everything is good. Yo, going back to Sam, like, you were a quarterback in high school. But how much do you like coaching receivers who have that quarterback background? How much does it help them? Yeah, nah, it's super helpful, man, like I said, because they, they see the bigger picture before it happened. They help them with their pre snap read. You know, we teach it in their uh, pre snap and post snap reads because the defense changed. But Sam already know if a uh, defender, if the Sam backer or the uh, nickel backer is capped with the safety, a blitz may be coming. And he's just naturally bringing that type of knowledge to the room just off the, the ripple of him being a quarterback and seeing the bigger picture. So uh, all of those things are happening naturally and organic for the room, and it, it's been fun to see. Yeah. How helpful is it that you've been playing for a long time, too, and those guys have a long-standing Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's super helpful. Uh, they, they play they quarterback and uh, receiver in high school, so that's instant uh, chemistry right there. So it, it's good to see a guy like uh, Sam in the building, and he's been super helpful. Uh, you know, with Peyton and getting the guys to understand Peyton because it's way more than just football with those guys. And what are some of the most important things if a true freshman wants to contribute at wide receiver? What, what, what kind of things do they need? Yeah, just first off, knowing what to do. Alignment, assignment, and then your fundamentals. So if I know what to do, then I know how to do it. Now I got myself a chance. So the biggest thing is being able to get lined up 
Okay. And knowing where to go, the assignment, knowing what to do, and then how to do it with your fundamentals. So if we could focus on those three things right there, those you, you'll have a chance, you'll put yourself in position. How are, how are Perry and Malcolm doing that they, they weren't able to go through spring? How, how are they handling yeah, that, it, that it, aspect? That's always going to be a learning curve for anybody. Uh, but those guys, man, they, they picking it up and they they, uh, they learning to grow day by day, 1% better every day. What's the connection been like between your receivers and Peyton Thorne this fall? It's been awesome, man, and that's a testament to uh, Peyton. Um, that, that dude is a leader. He's he one of the leaders on the team. Those guys following him, they believe in him, and it's a testament to the work that they put in. Like, we ain't just start uh, fall camp. They ain't just start working with fall camp. Those guys been getting out there this entire summer, and uh, it's good to see because, uh, you know, all those youngers have been working hard. Marcus, is there sort of a balancing act when you look at these highly rated freshmen of you and the staff putting them out there and get hey they're just your freshmen at the end of the day or are you just saying hey you know you've got that talent level we've got these expectations for you well in any given moment you still got to coach those guys up and put them in position to be successful too no matter what the uh, talent and you know that's what where coaches come in at but it, you know it's definitely a balance because you want to you don't just want to put somebody in a position that they're not ready for either so it's a balance in that on continuing to evaluate them, seeing exactly where they're at, and then as coaches put them in the best position to be successful. How helpful has it been? I mean, Coach Nix has experience with receivers. Even somebody like Mo Harris yeah. has experience coaching receivers. How helpful is it, is it to have that kind of brain trust? Man, man I love it. it. It's been awesome, man. Even Coach Freeze, man, he coached receivers at Ole Miss, you know, when, when he first got into the SEC. So you got Coach Freeze, you got Coach uh, Nix, you got Coach Heath. You know, you got Coach Mo, and you got myself, and so the knowledge that these guys have within the building, oh man, it, it, it's set up for those guys to succeed. Go back to Rob, I mean, you hear the guys talk about him, it's like, how the heck is this guy, you know, in his first year of playing SEC football, it seems like he, he belongs here. Um, just kind of, what were the evaluations like on him, and then is he a guy that exceeded expectations, just kind of as advertised? Yeah, he, he a guy, when you watch this film, and you break down this film once he entered the portal, uh, he, he a guy that had uh, the value to play both outside and inside receivers, so you know he had position flexibility. Well, when you see a guy that could do both of those things, you know he's not, he got to be a smart youngin to be able to move around. And so all of those things checked off, you know, and then he's, he's really good at the top of his route. He fundamentally sound. Football means something to him. Uh, he going to do all the extra. I wouldn't be surprised if he catch a judge right now. Like, that's just the guy that, that Rob is, and uh, I think that's what helped him. You coach from the Sun Belt a little bit, and there's some, some, some Sun Belt guys on this team, uh, uh, Jalen, Kiron. Yep. Rob, I mean, that, that's uh, you guys. You guys have found some success with uh, with, with, with that league. So. Yep, yep, man. And the Sun Belt, a, a talented league, and those, those kids are those young men are talented. And, uh, it, it's been good for us so far. You had you have a lot of new receivers, but you had two coming. <laughs> what have you seen from Caleb and Camden, knowing that there's a lot of hype and a lot of talk about the other guys, but you've got two there that are back. Yeah, the main thing that that we preach in the receiver room, man, we we better together. Um, it don't matter about hype, it don't matter about who came in. Everybody getting coached up, everybody getting reps, everybody going to support each other, everybody going to be accountable to what the standard that we send in the room. And I think once you create that type of atmosphere, it's easy or it's easier to block out the stuff that, uh, or it's easier to block out an expectation that's outside if the room got a standard that we set for ourselves. So we standards over expectations, you know, and I think the, the receiver room bonding to that. And that, that's how you keep them together. And it don't matter who out there, we represent each other. And so, so we gon' we gonna compete in that that way. Whether it's Caleb or whether it's Keandre, the standard is the same. We want to uh, compete. We want to dominate. We want to put the best plays on the field. Marcus, from a recruiting perspective, what's working for you guys right now? Uh, I think uh, it starts from the top with Coach Freeze. He's an elite recruiter. I think that's point blank. And then the, the, the second part of it is, is um, you know, once, once you got an elite recruiter at the top and he's recruiting, he's recruiting, I, it's just the standard that we set. And, and the thing is, we genuine in our relationships with these guys. Uh, we, we, we try to transform them. We try to build real relationships. And I think they see that. I think uh, they see something special about Auburn, about how we go about our business, how consistent we are. And uh, like I said, that, that part of it starts from the top, you know, Coach Freeze. Ben was talking about getting a full year under your belt and being able to kind of get those relationships. Do you feel the same way that now that you've been here a year? You... Yeah, absolutely. That, that always helps. And now when, you know, uh, 
families coming to campus and you know our program and our core values are set which is family right they see that and, and that's how we do everything around here whether it's coach to coach whether it's player to coach whether it's coach to recruit um i think they sense the uh family atmosphere that that is set by coach freeze and i think i know everybody on staff is on board with that and, and that's what i think is the biggest difference in how we're doing everything here Mark, let's go back to the summer what was your pitch the staff's pitch to a guy like keandre who was super highly rated pretty much could have gone wherever he wanted as a fourth pitch yeah man just uh, man. It, it, it kind of go back to the relationship, man. Um, we, we, we huge on relationships here, and I think ultimately that's what led Keandre to come in here. Um, you know, I think all these youngest man, just in the world that we're living in today, if they, they, they feel people that's, that's accountable around them, if they feel people that uh, can hold them accountable, and uh, not only do that on the field, but also off the field, I think that's what they want. And ultimately, just knowing Dre and all of that, I think that's what it came down to. Uh, he felt that he could blossom. He felt that he could be himself here. And uh, he felt he also felt good about Peyton Thorne, and he felt good about the younger receivers that he could use the impact on. Him. And so I think all of those things uh, resonated with him. And, uh, and he wanted to be a leader, and he could see the golden opportunity come in and do that. What, what do you envision the biggest difference in the offense being from this year compared to last year? Uh, you know, just uh, just guys focusing in and honing in on you know what what what's being asked to do, and so uh, it's been it's been good to see guys just continue to buy into exactly what's being taught. Uh, it's good to uh, see Coach Freeze you know being involved, and um, it's super exciting, and you can sense it from the players as well. We've seen kind of even going back to them being in like the Under Armour game together, then working out the summer. Perry and Cam have a close relationship. How would you? They're still both really young kids. How would you kind of describe their personality? Nah, nah it, it's awesome to see those guys. Like uh, even Perry, you know, he, he in the ground rolling now because he won here this spring. And uh, Cam, I, I hear Cam tap him. I know how you feel, man. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's just cool to see that, and you know that uh, that's somebody that uh, Perry can lean on just in terms of you know. Just adjusting and adapting to the playbook and the speed of practice and the speed of college and everything. So it, it's been awesome to see those two uh, together and they, they feed off each other's energy. And not only them two, but the entire room. They, everybody feeding off each other's energy right now. Do you feel like Bryce is is coming along as well? Oh, yeah. Talk, talk about the other three freshmen who've seen a little bit more. But, I mean, oh, yeah. Bryce oh, yeah. Also. Bryce, man, I'm, I'm glad he is, man. One thing you can't coach is speed. He, he definitely got that. Um, and you can see his development from the screen to now. You could tell he was here this spring, just with how he's uh, uh, developed, and, like just knowing what to do. Um, so it, it, it's fun, uh, coaching Bryce. Uh, he another guy that come in with the same attitude every day, man. One thing I can say about the room right now is the approach to things is a, a grateful, gratitude attitude, uh, and uh, it, it's been fun so far. The you as the coaches are super involved. Obviously, it's the player-led practices in the summer. But that's what Peyton has talked a lot about. That's mm -hmm. what that's what a lot of the receivers have talked about. Have you kind of seen the fruits of that early in camp? All that work they did with Peyton. Oh yeah, no, no doubt. You can kind of tell, and not only just from making a play or whatnot, but just how they communicate with each other. You can tell they uh, grasp on what we asking them to do. You can tell it's something that they they consciously worked on, and uh, you know, so far you can tell the, uh, the dividends in it. Whatever we had last year, you know, we, we had to find ways um, to find our playmakers, you know, get them the ball. Um, and obviously, as we went through the season, um, especially after that Cal game, we kind of knew that he, he could win some of those one-on-one -on -one matchups outside. And so, um, you know, last year we had we had to find some ways to, to, to utilize him, to move him around. But to answer your question. Um, it helps having those weapons. Um, I mean, when you look at that wide receiver room, it's, it's totally different. You know, you know, everybody talks about Coach Freeze has a, uh, you know, they, they, he has a certain look to a wide receiver. And when you look at that room right now, we're getting there, and it helps, you know, it helps us, you know, kind of move Baldwin within the box, keep him there, um, taking those advantages when we get to the passing game. But it's helping his game because now he's spending more time within the box yeah. where um, you know, I think that run game stuff is taking a lot of you know, you know, pride in, in what we're doing there.
Fun, you know. He's almost like uh, I forgot about telling this the other day. He's almost like a, like a second coach in there for me. Um, we go through all the scenes and everything, and, and it's been fun. Um, the really good thing with him is, you know, his wife, you know, Angie, they're about to have a baby here soon. So, um, you know, just another another year with him is really good. One that's always had a lot of promise, a lot of hope, and what he did. The one word that we always use with him is consistency. Um, and just seeing where his game has gone in a year and a half. Um, we jokingly in the, in the meeting room yesterday, you know, showed some clips of him when he got here his first year, and to see how much he's progressed over the years. Um, and his poor work, and his you know, physicality has never been a, you know, a problem for him. Um, but to continue to, you know, a lot of things we're asking him to see you in doing in, in high school. Are you? So, I'm excited about Mike. You, you, you'll see a lot of Mike, um, hopefully, as, as he stays healthy uh, more this year. Hey, what areas do you feel like? I apologize if you already got to ask this, but do you feel like Rivaldo? Uh, I think overall knowledge of what you're doing now. Uh, I, I think he, he's always got a chip on his shoulder. You know, he, he's a kind of you know, young man that comes in and works and gets head down. And, you know, whenever success comes his way, he's going to take it. You know, he's a huge team player. Um, it's the you know, thing that we've emphasized you know, is when the play comes our way, make it. And, you know, do what we're asked to do. If you got to go block the box, um, let's go do that. But I, I think for him, he just puts his head down and does his work. And, you know, Whatever it was last year, and he ended up being a really good player for the team. So I know he's excited. I think our running backs have been solid. That's what you guys are going to be for. Do you think he's a ball though? So I've been thinking he'd be an all-ACC guy here more. Completely won over your daughter. Did I think I, I had a, you know, hopefully I thought it was going to happen, but you know, I don't know if I've ever said the story. When FIU, his freshman year came to Liberty when we were there, um, he was their tight end. Um, big cat weekend. And, you know, he just he went off around, that night, and, uh, and I looked key, at Coach Lowe, and I told him if I'm ever at another school, to school now too, and where I where he hits the portal, so I that's the worst he's gonna get. And lo and behold, two years later, well, you know we get here again a couple weeks later. You know, it's just crazy how it happens. But seeing him, I think that's a really good his skill set was. I think it's just him being he's a huge he's a basketball player before he plays football in junior year. I think that's what it is, it's just him being able to he's got really strong hands, you know, side of a new part of the body. Uh, I think that's what has kind of you know, helped him with the most of Um Rico hit you know, super physical kid, obviously he gets a great defensive end in, in high school. Um, he's got really good ball skills. I've always got to remind myself he's new to the position. Um, but you know, him, learn, his, his learning skill, I mean, it's been really good. We might can start taking him on the point to kind of teach him the ropes. But uh, it's been really good to see, you know, some of the things that he's doing out there with his skill set. Um, and the physicality that he plays with. Um, I think it's uh, you know, the one that's huge overall, I think. exciting me um, I think a lot right now. Process is 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 he hardly gets talked about these guys that I'm willing to go in and work. He is. That I'm willing to put in the time. I'm, I'm excited about him. I'm excited about what he's doing. I'm going to do it at my time. But he's had a really good camp for us. Hopefully he can do it. I think once they see that, but he's the one that I think is going into the team. I think he's going to in and out of position. He's going to be excited about it. I think we found our way in the building. I think that is you know, it, it, the run game was always uh, a strong suit, but it's, you know, more of the whatever it may be. I think the, 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 the ball skills again, another basketball player. I mean, he caught a, a slot fade um, in, in practice the other day, and, and that's kind of what you saw him. It's very similar to the catch can tell you um, something like that. That he's he's one of the most dominant practice ball um, that has got us. You know, our offense is definitely excited in the air and up into the game. That, that's that's what I love about it. You know, I just Having tell those guys, hey, these are the tools that we use, uh, right? This is the scheme. Really um, and if anything changes on, 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 on the field, they can all fix it for you. Um, so that's the advantage of having those, those, those older guys in there. the benefit um, in your experience, yeah. also coaching I've receivers, so that maybe you're able to help out. Yeah. 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 It is definitely, in my opinion, it has helped. Uh, I think it's just uh, well, now that we've got a chance to really build relationships, 
my experiences. Um, I know when we first got here, we were a little behind. Um, but for us to, to have a year, a year and a half, and then two years to have relationships with these young men, I think that's what, um, you know, in Auburn itself, you know, you get kids on campus, a lot of these kids, they talk. So I think I'm just being at Auburn, and they talk to their buddies, and they're like, okay, I got to go see it for myself. Um, and I think that's what it is. If you, if you ask today, John Quest would say, Coach Priest has to talk for all of us. You know, Cobb is probably one of the that area. We're always competing. Yeah, he's going to be a first place. He's going to call a parent or a colleague. To an athlete, um, and then we all do it collectively as a family. So, you know, whatever tight end we're recruiting, I mean, those Knicks and those guys in the offensive staff are leadership number one. Not a lot of pads yet, but what are you seeing out of the guys so far? Yeah, I think uh, the, the, definitely the work ethic is there um, in the classroom, the meeting room, as well as on the field. I think they're doing a really good job uh, growing. I think that's probably where we've matured the most as a unit from spring ball to, to fall camp. Which is where I thought we needed to come out of fall or come out of spring. Come out of spring, I thought we had some talent, but just the mental part of it wanted them to get better in that way, and they really attacked it over the summer, and they're attacking it right now um, on a daily basis. So I'm excited about that and the growth that we've we've shown there. How much I mean, different do you feel about the depth in this room as compared to maybe a year ago? Yeah, I think it's you can just tell on the field. You know, we can and we use depth chart lightly around here during fall camp, but. You know, you don't really tell much difference between the ones and twos and then some of the threes as well. You don't really tell much different when they're out there on the field. They're all executing. I think that's a testament to the three guys, the four guys that are repping this center, uh, which is Connor Lou, Tate Johnson, Braden Joyner, and Dylan Senda, because they're, they're, they're controlling traffic there. And those four guys are probably the best mental guys we have. And so they're able to get everybody on the same page. I think that's probably the, the, the thing that's helping that depth continue to grow is because I think everybody knows what to do because those three or four guys playing center. How much value have you seen in, in bringing in a guy like Percy, who, you know, SEC tackle, and, you know, not only what he brings, but maybe, you know, being able to slide in a guy like Dylan. And yeah, just how much value have you seen in the addition of Percy? Yeah, just off the top, it, it allows Dylan Wade to play the position that he's more fit to play. Although I thought he did a good job at tackle, he's more fit to play guard um, here and at the next level. So it benefits him in the future. Be able to show some versatility, which is what the National Football League is looking for. And then bring it in Percy. I think, number one, it stimulates competition. I think it's allowed people behind him, like Tyler Johnson, to know that they got to go try to beat that guy out. So it's, it's helped them grow. And then Percy has is, is allowed us to have a – he's a big body, big athlete. He's got to be more consistent with his technique and stop relying on I'm 6'8", 350. I can just out. He's bigger than everybody. He's got to rely more on his technique. But it's pushing him to be able to do that. So it's brought a lot of value to the room. So excited about that, uh, that, that progression there. What do you like about Percy right now? Um, I like that he's growing technically speaking. I mean, I think in the spring, um, he was just trying to figure out what we were doing in terms of the play calls and snap counts. And I think now the biggest jump is he's trying to find his technique and me as a coach trying to figure out what technique works for him. Um, and because he's a different body, everybody's different, and every body type is different. And he is a unique body because he's so big and, and so broad that some of the techniques I teach maybe to the more athletic body types, the smaller body types, don't fit for him. So, just trying to find that mesh of what can work for him, it's been an exciting week to see that progression. So, excited to see where the next two weeks takes us there. You don't mention the, the centers. How yeah. much do you put on their shoulders in terms of, you know? checks and all those things that, and how much they have to do yeah they do they do everything they call the front they id the, the point every play that gets the, the direction of the block going um, them and the quarterback are communicating in terms of flipping protections and flipping all these different things and and so a bunch um, and i think they'll probably tell you that and being a center myself it's, i'm a little a little bit harder on those guys than anybody else because i know if they are right then everybody else is going to be right too um, so a lot, and they're all taking it, taking it on, and they're all doing a good job with it. You talked with us last year uh, about too tall, how excited you were, and his potential. Where do you see him now? I mean, how, how far has he come? Yeah, I think uh, credit to Coach Dom and Miss Danielle because they transformed his body. He's up to like 315 pounds right now, staying consistent there. The strength is there. The natural power has grown. That was really the only things really missing in his game last year. You can probably tell sometimes kind of get overpowered. Well, now he ha power. Now he has that year in the weight room to back that up. So he's always been very good mentally and athletically. 
now he's pairing up that year in the, in the weight room and in this nutrition. So he's uh, he's been a very bright spot in camp uh, for us up front. So um, really always been excited about him, but I think his best ball is ahead of him here and at the next level. What about, about Tyler and, and yeah. Seth, those other tackles, yeah. having some guys so athletic, yeah. how, how nice is that to see and have a chance to develop guys like that? Yeah, Tyler Johnson, I can't, uh, I can't speak more about his growth over the last year. Mentally, physically, he's very similar to Too Tall in terms of he just needed a year in the weight room to get it all figured out. And he's got his weight up there. He's strong at the point of contact. Really good body quickness. Um, we're going to count on him at some point. And, and he's, he's doing a really good job. So I'm excited to kind of see that competition of him, you know, trying to propel himself forward as well. So and it's Seth the same way. You know, Seth was a one-year high school player um, at a powerhouse. He was from Nebraska, moved to Vegas. So he was similar. His background and Tutal's background very similar. Not a lot of high school football. And then one year at JUCO, really, and then he's here. So he's kind of gotten past the point where he's swimming and he's kind of trying to, to make those strides. So he's doing a, doing a nice job for us as well. Okay, he fought really hard to get Connor Lou uh, when you guys first got here. Yeah. Tell me, has he been the guy you expected him to be? Yeah, no question. He's, he's the total package leader. He's our leader. He's a team leader. So absolutely, he's uh, just a phenomenal human being, too. So uh, he, he's, uh, he's certainly lived up to to the expectations in every way and exceeded them. So excited to be his coach, proud to be his coach. Where's he gotten better in the last nine months? Uh, knowledge, last year as a freshman, relied a little bit on, uh, on Gunner and Cam to kind of get everybody in, in line. He's now overtaking that part of it. Functional strength has gotten better. And then now it's just progressive technique and kind of getting some specialty calls where, you know, less experienced center might not be able to get us in that spot. He's able to kind of guide us in the right direction. What, what are you looking for out of this offensive line group between now and when you guys really start to shift gears towards opponents, you know, here later as well? Yeah, just, just fundamentals and technique. Just getting better at the day-to-day -day process. Uh, don't, don't fall out of love with the, the basics, because I believe if we can do that, we can get better fundamentally. It'll show on Saturdays way right more than anything else. So I'm, I'm proud of the progression through week one. But I'm really excited to see how much we can grow into the next week and then leading up into, into game time. You talked about it. I guess we've talked about every position except right guard. Talk talked about Jeremiah and, and the, the, the young guys you've got working at guard. Yeah, so Jeremiah's done a great job. First full year we've had with him because he didn't practice in the spring of 23. So he's a little behind going into camp last year and didn't get as much reps as he wanted. But credit to Jeremiah of, he was not where he wanted to be last year, and he took initiative of that and got himself in shape, got himself on the same mental page as everybody else in terms of the playbook. And now the physicality part's always been there. We've known that. So he's, he's got everything in line and heading in the right direction. So he's been really, really, uh, really positive uh, light over the last seven days. So his progression's really, really, uh, uh, it's there and it's continuing to grow. So excited about that. And then the young guards, Brady Joyner's done a phenomenal job. Um, you know, I think he's can play all three in those interior positions. Another guy that's grown up a lot in this program. So excited about his growth. And then DeAndre Carter um, is as a football player. So I'm excited. Got him in the summertime, so getting him, get him in shape. He's still got a little bit of ways to go there, but he flashes and when he flashes, you can kind of see the player that he really comes. So excited about that. EJ Harris as well doing a good job. Um, being steady and being solid there is a, is a guy that's going for us.